There were over a hundred pictures in all, but one was missing, the painter told me, the very first portrait he had drawn as a child. He had liked his gentle teacher, so was shocked and shamed when it all erupted and he learned of his naivety. She was, they warned him, a class enemy, the daughter of a landlord. He steeled his heart and did the right thing, used his pen, pinned the hideous caricature to the blackboard, and still remembered, as if it were this morning, the moment she walked in and saw it, and how the blood drained from her face. She understood already what it might mean, what might follow. He was too young, but grew up fast. Soon he would see them burning pictures and breaking Buddhas, beating people with sticks and metal bars. Writing Red Memory took me right across China to speak to so many people who'd lived through the era and people who've all chosen to keep that memory alive in some way, ranging from former Red Guards, people who were victims at the time, through to people who even impersonate some of the key figures of the era. And then beyond that, I went to some of the key sites and of course I drew on the wealth of scholarship that's now been done, often by Chinese scholars studying the era. The Cultural Revolution was just a decade of turbulence and trauma in many cases that has scarred many people in China so deeply. And yet there is this paradox that many people there still think of it quite fondly in some ways and have that element of nostalgia towards it. And it was really important to me to capture that as well.